Hello everyone um, and welcome back. Um, so, final Code Along lecture is going to have a look at how we add holidays into profits. So spiky events within our time series that we need to model in some way. And profit does that with adding dummy variables to the model. So variables which are either zero for when it is that holiday um, or sorry, when it isn't that holiday, or one for when that holiday is active. So we're in Code Along um, Notebook 3. So uh, from our top level folder, um, if you go to Code Along Lectures, and again, there are two alternatives. There's the Code Along Live Lecture, which I'm in, um, or there's the um, Solutions, which has the code in place, and you can, you can type that in. Yeah, you can just run that rather than typing it in. Um, so let's import um, NumPy, Pandas, and Plotlib, Matplotlib, as usual. And then we're going to import ex profit in exactly the same way as we did before. And of course, we've got our standard profit training data function. Uh, and again, we're going to load the respiratory um, admissions data set. Um, from this URL, we're going to turn that into our profit training formatted data using our profit training data function. We'll just have a quick look at the head of that to check that worked. And yes, everything works. It's in starts off in 2015-08, and we've got the DS column and we've got the Y column. So everything exactly the same as we've done before. So we now need to add in these holidays, these spiky events that recur within our data, perhaps around Christmas or, or whatnot. So again, Profit makes this very, very simple for you. Um, there is a function, a method that you can call from the model object called add country holidays, where you type in a country name. So most of the time we'll be typing in England, I would assume, and that will automatically add a bunch of holidays to Profit for you and then we call the fit method. Um, make sure, my note is here, make sure you call that before you fit the model. Okay, because otherwise profit will just miss those holidays. And then afterwards we can take a look at um, what holidays have been fitted by calling the train holiday names attribute and then turning that to a list, a Python list, and it will show us what what that will look like, and we'll take a look at that. Uh, so, um, and then we can zoom in if we want. You know, if we from, um, that should actually be from profit.plot import plot forecast component, we can then zoom in if we want on a particular day. So for example, we could zoom in on Christmas day, just have a look at what, um, how profit is acting on those days. Is it adding a whole load of demand or is it subtracting a whole load of demand or is it not really making much difference whatsoever? So here's our original code. So we create a profit object. We're going for 95% prediction intervals. We are uh, disabling the interday seasonality uh, and then we fit our models. So uh, what we need to do is add this country hunt holidays in. So if we type model dot add country holidays and country name equals England. And then run that. That all seems to have worked okay. OK, uh, optimization terminated normally. And, and remember, you may or may not see this output depending on if you're, if you're using Mac, Windows, or Linux. I think on Windows, it's, it's not there. Um, but if you're using uh, Linux or Mac, it, it, might, it might turn up. So let's have a look at what holidays were included. So that's model.train uh, holiday names, and we'll convert that to a list. 
Uh, so we've got New Year's Day, Christmas Day, etc. So bank holidays and things. You'll see that for some things we've got Christmas Day and Christmas Day observed, um, a New Year's Day or Boxing Day observed. Uh, and so that's when a bank holiday falls on a weekend and then the observed bank holiday is moved to the following Monday, for example. So uh, step three, let's make a prediction and analyze some components. Um, so uh, what we will do is we will make a prediction. So the first thing we need to do is make a future data frame. We're gonna predict 84 periods into the future, 84 days into the future. Um, so we make our future data frame, we pass that to the model.predict method and that produces our profit forecast for us. Okay, so now we've done that, we've got our forecast and we can take a look at the model components if we want. Okay, so let's, let's plot components. So now we can see we've got trend, we've got weekly, and we've got yearly, but we've now also got the holidays components. And we can see definitely that some holidays do seem to make a difference, uh, but it's a bit difficult to see which of those is which. Um, so what we could do is we could plot an individual component. Um, so here I've plotted Good Friday, and we can see, yes, on Good Friday, demand for respiratory admissions is, is lower. Um, it's about 17 and a half lower on average, or 18 or 17 on average. Um, or we could change that to Christmas Day, see what that looks like. And again, Christmas Day reduces demand for respiratory admissions as well. Uh, so uh, what might be easier is to run um, the plot plotly uh, function so we get an interactive set of um, charts. Um, so here we've got uh, our um, time series. Remember the black dots are the observed values, the real values, the ground truths, whatever you want to call them. The dark blue is the predicted value, the point estimate, the light blue is our prediction interval. And in this case, it is a 95% prediction interval where we would expect 95% of those black dots to lie. Uh, and we can see that from um, around August in 2018, that's when our forecast starts. So these are in sample predictions and then these are our out of sample predictions, our forecasts. So we can see it follows a fairly sensible pattern. If we wanted to, we could zoom in on the last month or the last six months to see what that looks like. Um, and you can see, for example, that Profit's doing a reasonable job of, of capturing those points within its uncertainty limits. And we can also uh, plot the uh, components Okay, so we've already we've already done that, but we could we could have that instead as um, a plotly chart, and that helps particularly with holidays. So uh, you know, this day I can see oh that was Good Friday, this is Spring Bank Holiday, May Day, late summer, uh, Christmas Day observed. That seemed to increase demand on that day, but the yeah. So you can you can drill into the time series a little bit easier with plotly's functions. In my opinion, that makes it a bit easier. Uh, what about, um, let's add a random date. Uh, so, um, you know, maybe there's something special about your time series that the standard dates that profit includes doesn't capture. So here, I mean, this is just a silly one, really. Here I've just introduced Black Friday dates from 2014 through to 2025. Okay, so I've defined them myself. I've looked up these dates um, and I've created a Black Friday data frame. Okay, and I've defined that data frame using a Python dictionary. That Python dictionary um, has two keys, holiday and DS, which is the date. So holiday is Black Friday and the date is a, 
I've used the pandas to date time function uh, and passed in this list of dates here. Let's just have a look at that Black Friday data frame. So what you end up with is basically one column called holiday with a repeating set of um, strings that say Black Friday. It could say anything you want, whatever data it is. And then you've got DS, which are the actual Black Friday dates going forward to 2025 from 2014. So to add that into profit, uh, you do that in a bit of an odd way. Um, when you create the profit object, um, you include an additional parameter called holidays. So here I'm setting holidays to the Black Friday data frame. Okay, so I'm, if you go back up to the old profit code, just to give you a bit of contrast, Here I created my profit object by just passing in the interval width and the daily seasonality equals false. And then I called my add country holidays. Down here, uh, I've also specified this holidays parameter, which I've set to the Black Friday data frame. Okay, and that might contain uh, multiple dates. Okay, different holidays that you need to include for your particular time series. And I'm also adding standard country, ho country holidays to the model. Then I'm fitting it. And now I'm going to make my prediction. So I first make my future data frame. And then I call predict and that gives me my forecasts. So let's run that. Uh, that's great. It's all, it's all run fine. Um, I can check if Black Friday is now included by looking at the train holiday names to list. Yes, it is. We've now got Black Friday included in the list. So let's have a look at that Black Friday um, components. You know, does it make a difference to the model? I think the answer is no, it won't, but we need to check. So it looks big until you look at the y-axis and see that actually profit has fitted a coefficient here, but it's only 0 0.8. So it's trivial. So this is a good lesson in that Profit will always try and fit to whatever holidays you put in. However, those holidays may not be having any real benefit for the prediction in the model. And you might indeed find that adding in random holidays with no effect may reduce the quality or the accuracy of your model. So always try and get the simplest model you can and only include holidays that are relevant. Now, you may find that uh, managers or particular people within the organisation tell you which dates are important. So you can use profit to kind of falsify that and say, actually, this doesn't make any difference to the prediction. These are the dates that are important and you should only include that limited subset of dates within profit. Uh, so that's it for the code alongs. Now we're going to switch over to some exercises. Uh, for you to have a go at what I've just done here with a different data set.